So first things first, Kyle, how are you? I'm very well, thanks. Thanks for having me. How about yourself? I'm I'm not too bad either. Um, thank you for taking the time out of your day to talk with us. Now, where I want to start is I, I read a, a previous interview you did some years back and you described uh, your own music as sonic waterboarding. I, I, yeah. I, how did you arrive at that term to describe what you do? Uh, I don't remember the day that it came up, but I was just, you know, I'm always trying to describe, you know, I, I lean on metaphor a lot uh, mm. to to talk about things, but I, I don't remember. I think it was uh, maybe through that interview process. I can't remember. I was just reaching for different ways of describing the effect I wanted it to have on the listener, you know, because you can use, you know, adjectives like overwhelm or uh, punish or whatever but you know it's like what's a real like visceral mm. uh, way that you can relate to the experience and i after i came up with that i was like there's just really for me there's no other no better way of of explaining what what i feel and what i was going for when i made that album uh just that N never like never being allowed to take a breath but never dying mm. you know, like, <laughs> that <laughs> it's like suffocating endlessly uh <laughs> is what that album feels like to me but uh, i find that term interesting and and other descriptions you've given in the past about the music because it it kind of touches upon that that question what is art and then what is its function and what 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 kind of answer have you for yourself found uh, to that question what is art and and what do you want right. to it to do awesome love that question thank you uh to me art as elegantly as i can understand it is Is, is doing your best to honestly broadcast your human experience to another person. It's that's it. You know, like it's really, and that sounds might, it might sound overly simplified, but it's not. I mean, a lot of people that try to, as soon as that's not what you're doing, it's not art. As mm -hmm. soon as you start making something that isn't a true representation of your internal experience, that's not art anymore. If you make something for for someone to listen to because you think, oh, I'm going to make this song because I think other people will like it, that's not art, mm. in my opinion. Even if it's a good song, you know what I mean? Like you can make sure. a really good product and have it not be art, you know? So I think um, art is in its purest form. It's when you're feeling something that you cannot articulate with the very crude and incomplete medium of human language mm. um, with, and, and it's, it's so potent and big in you and you don't have words for it that you have to manifest it outside of yourself and share it with everybody, sure. you know, um, and people do that with, whatever emotion they're experiencing you know if someone feels if they're overwhelmed by love they're going to write some love songs and they're going to want you the listener to feel loved you know what i mean if you feel lonely you're going to want the world to know that you're lonely or your listener you know maybe not the world maybe yourself who knows whoever you're making it for but sure. uh, and for me i was really angry and hurt and uh and that's what I wanted to make people feel, you know, misery loves company, just like every other emotion. And, 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 and anger gets a bad rap for that. Like, don't you fucking, but show me one emotion that people don't try to impose on other people. You know, if you're happy, you're going to want other people to be happy. You know, it's like, I'm not defending being a fucking terror. I'm just saying it's like a human, it's just a natural. Like, it's and, it's and, part you know, of our being. It's just what we do. It's just what mm -hmm. we do. And there's a function for it. Sure. You know, like if you think of humanity as kind of an organism, you know, you want to know where the parts of your body are hurting. 
where the infections are. And I think uh, a lot of people that are suffering, um, you know, they're them lashing out is their way of being like, there's a problem here, you know, and that's mm-hmm. not, it's not, again, that doesn't part in any, it's just a fact of the matter. Right. Um, so for me, I took that seriously. And instead of trying to write really good songs, I tried to write music that the end result would be uh, let me put it this way. Uh, I think when a lot of a lot of the qualifiers that people conventionally use to determine if a song is good or bad usually has something to do with a kind of accessibility, pleasantness, comfortability, sure. ease of listening, right? So if you're trying to not create that experience, you have to kind of twist and bend and and ruffle things uh, to the point where you're you're kind of shredding those nerves now mm. you know it's kind of like dissonance well a lot of metal bands discovered with dissonance what that can right. do to you um, uh, um you know it kind of you know it's like not it's kind of sadistic you know what i mean like it's not sure. the most pleasant thing to listen to um so being able to create a sound that almost pushes the listener away while at the very to the very to their breaking point letting them up for air pulling them back in close mm. and then doing everything we can to kind of force them to meet us where we're at like we're kind of wrestling with the listener you know vitriol should never be an easy listen okay uh it should never be you know and I, I, and that's for that's a love it or hate it thing but i like i've always really liked difficult music Mm. So that's what I wanted to do. Sorry, I was kind of a. No, no, I'm not. No, no, no worries. That, that 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 makes my job very uh, very easy. So that's always uh, helpful. No, the, the, I, the, I get it completely because. Uh, well, what I find interesting then is uh, when did the. Uh, how would I say technical prowess your your skills as a musician catch up to what you had in your mind then when when did you were you able to approximate what 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 it was that you wanted to convey oh great question uh it, that took a long time that was uh was it the previous album or may, maybe the EP even or kind of a two-parter the Again, going back to what my goals of vitriol were, it was more about vibe than technicality. So, okay. uh, and if I was trying to use, and I still do, you use technicality to lend itself to that density, to mm. that kind of uh, flood of information, you know, that is to me like, uh, can be a punishing experience in a fun way. Um, but it was really just about creating something that felt like 50 tons of mercury, you know? Mm. Uh, and honestly, the first song that truly felt like vitriol as it is now was victim. Okay. Uh, that was the first song Adam and I were like, oh, this is it. Like, this is just so mean, you know what I mean? Like, this is just such a m- mean sounding song. So that was that and like pain will define their death. I think were the, Revel identity revelations of the band. Uh, and as far as technicality, uh, I don't know, it's hard to say. It's not, it's so funny to say because we are objectively an extremely technical band, but <laughs> sure. technicality is not a huge priority. It's just kind okay. of, a, it's a means to an end. And it's also just a byproduct of me being an obsessive um person that whatever i do i'm gonna you know try to i get bored easy so i like to Mm. really push myself with everything that i do and so i think the technicality is also just a byproduct of that of me wanting to to just develop more and more and challenge myself 
No, but I think it's cool. I mean, if you listen to Matt's drumming on the album, it's it's insane. Uh, some parts, so the, the, finding the the right people around you uh, who who can go along on that journey with you is really cool. I think oh, it's very cool and hard. You know, Matt. <laughs> sure. Is, it took a long time. It took about ten years to find that guy. Mm. But yeah, uh, I realized pretty far in, pretty late in the game, that vitriol, like uh, you know, Adam and I are just willing to 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 i don't know punish ourselves more than other people like that's mm -hmm. i think our strength rather than talent or not that i don't i don't think we're untalented i don't think we're talented but um we're you know we just endure shit and uh that's hard to find people that are willing to do that at, to do something that's that difficult with that little of like monetary re reward you know sure uh, I have a two-part question about this because uh, on the one hand, I, I believe uh, this creative process or recording process uh, of the new album was, was described as somewhat arduous and, and you even took on productional duties as well. So you have to balance a lot of things at the same time. So it's very difficult. Uh, as you mentioned, you endure and you, you kind of push through. And the second part of that is where what do you attribute that to why, why are you that way have you thought about that why you kind of uh have that resilience or, or determination yeah i mean the short answer is uh autism <laughs> <laughs> you know, like a, uh full-blown asperger's um is uh definitely a part of it um i'm laughing but i am being sincere okay uh but uh so that that is i mean genuinely like a people with my brain type have access to a kind of hyper fixation mm. that um other people don't so i always thought i was just like an obsessive nut bar which i am but i guess there's a reason for that other that beyond that why i'm willing to keep doing it with metal um in this music is um I swear I get to sound really corny. Uh, love, I guess. Mm -hmm. You know, I just really um, this art is the most important thing in my life. It's been the most valuable thing uh, as a fan of the medium. It's been the most rewarding thing in my life. It's given me, I like to say, um, that which gave me everything deserves everything from me. Mm. and uh that's how i feel about this music that's how i feel about the philosophies espoused by the band so for me it's so much more than a metal band it's like a, a vehicle for self-actualization and like mm. self-discovery and devotion there's something very devotional about it to me it's like i think everyone in the world should have one place one place in their life whether it be here or anywhere else where you leave everything out on the what am i trying to say where you where you truly submit yourself to some to a, an effort that is beyond mm. It's kind of like a, I imagine it's what like religious people experience when they're talking about um, how important it is to have something larger than yourself. Sure. And for, for me, vitriol is the place where my comfort doesn't matter anymore. You know, your your what what you want doesn't matter anymore. You know, it's like this radically humbling place where it's just like all whatever. If the song can be better. It needs to be better. Mm. Like it doesn't matter what you don't want to spend another month. I don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't matter. You spent too long writing a song that isn't that good because you're too proud to shit can. I don't give a fuck. You know it can be better. Make it better. Throw it away. That kind of a thing where you just don't. It's no excuses. No letting. No shortcuts. No letting yourself off the hook. 
you know, there are places it's healthy to have, to be able to do that, to half-ass some things, you know what I mean? In some places in life, but everyone has to have like a temple where mm. you see what you're made of, where you really see what you're made of and uh, a rock to crash against, you know? And that's for me, I've, I've framed vitriol as that in my mind, that that's my one arena that when I walk into, I'm a warrior. You know what I mean? Like sure. uh, there's no, no fucking excuses. Um, and that's, and, and being able to rise to that occasion is very rewarding. So in that way, making that a value, you know, some people would say it's romanticizing suffering. I would say what's so bad about that. Um, but you, once you make that a value, it becomes tremendously reward. That suffering becomes really rewarding because it's not meaningless anymore. You know, like a lot of, why am I doing Like I, I get people asking me that. Why do you do it? Why do you, if you're not having fun, why do you do it? And I genuinely pity people that ask me that question. Cause it's like, if, if you really think the only things of value are things, that, come easy. <laughs> are things that are fun fuck your life must be hollow you know what i mean like so empty mm. and that's i, I think know, there's like, no, no, no as you mentioned I, I do think there's beauty in suffering and obviously th there are different kinds of suffering but suffering for ours or suffering for for a certain goal i mean th there always has to be you have to put something in to get something out again uh, and, and it, yeah exactly um are, are you the same then with your lyrics? Because uh, I do find your lyrics quite interesting because they are very, uh, somewhat poetic. And, and uh, how would I describe this? I read somewhere where you, where you I don't know if this was, um, you were talking about lyric writing in general, but you, you kind of try to take the perspective uh, from the outside. I mean, is that fair to say? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I've always felt that... Um out of phase on the outside looking in you know i think that's a uh experience <sighs> not to make this about uh, uh brain types or anything but um you know that was that's an experience that's underlined all of my interpersonal relationships throughout life is kind of distance uh, I feel like there's this big glass pane between myself and everything else. Okay. And later in life, realizing, uh, discovering, getting the the autism diagnosis, the uh, high functioning autism. Uh, that's that's pretty um, universal uh for for people with with autism that experience that kind of alienness you know mm -hmm. um so i think that is i'm bringing this up why i'm bringing this up is because it's been um really rewarding for me uh touring and meeting a lot of fans who have similar brains mm -hmm. and what i'm realizing is a lot of that information and that ex that world experience like going back to saying what art is um the beauty in actually endeavoring to make art and not a product is if you do it it's a siren song for people that share that experience and what was kind of beautiful about vitriol's music for me is that touring and meeting so many neurodivergent fans was an awakening for me because i saw mm -hmm. myself in them and I'm like, oh, there's like a code written in this shit, you know? Um, so I definitely, you know, I like, I just like talking about that because it not only, um, I think makes other people feel comfortable talking about it, but also, uh, I think my, my, my fans that share that experience feel very, um, validated and, and like seen when they sure they find out that i am so um yeah i think that it's a weird way of answering your question but <laughs> yeah it's uh it is definitely like a alien perspective there's a line in one of my favorite songs they've written lyrically violence a worthy truth mm. uh and it says 
I will make peace with being orphaned by this world for it is not of me and I'm not of it and I not of it. Mm. You know, um, just kind of this comfort with being like, I'm here kind of as a passenger. I don't feel like a part of this thing. Um, um, but the lyrics are more important than the music for me. I mean, that's definitely okay. where I put uh, the music ultimately serves the lyrics. You know, okay. it's to, I've always had this idea where I'm like, if I make vitriol potent enough musically, people kind of be forced to take the <laughs> lyric seriously because they'll be like, man, well, this guy's clearly trying. Let's, let's hear him out. Mm. But it, have you always been a big reader or, or uh, read poetry or those kind of things? What, what inspires or what, what, uh, yeah. I, I've always, I've always written, um, As a young kid, I I wanted to be a writer before I wanted to be a musician. Okay, um, and that was my first passion was creative writing. Um, I'm embarrassed to admit I'm not much of a reader. Um, that is definitely one of my intellectual blind spots. But uh, I always wrote. You know, okay. I cherry pick stuff. Um, you know. But I'm not an avid reader. Um, but yeah, I just always wrote. And when I, that was tough for me because when I was deciding to participate in bands, I was like, fuck, what do I do? Mm. Do I be a guitar player or do I do the vocalist thing? There was like a weird window in my teens where I was like, I'm just going to be a vocalist because okay. I want to write lyrics. Decided I couldn't. There's it decided there's no way I could be in some, uh, another person's band where I'm not involved in the writing the music. So I was like, ah, fuck it, I'll be a guitar player. I'll have to do it. And then here we here we are now. That's the, the <laughs> life of a control freak. You know what do you <laughs> what do you want? Um, so yeah, for me it was always always just about wanting to share my. my internal world in that way and i love i love writing and i just want um if i could choose to have my lyrics or my music be my legacy it would be my lyrics final question then because one thing i also read about the new album is that there are uh like tidbits of hope in there that you, there, there there are of optimism uh, yeah. a, a sense of optimism in a sense and one thing i got and maybe i'm misguided but it feels like there's some certain sense of transformation uh in 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 the music am I, is that a at all a fair assessment that there's kind of oh yeah i mean it's even you know really in the title suffer and become you know sure. uh, so it is this this violent i mean even vitriol itself the name is uh represents a violent refinement you know like a um tough love you know what i mean uh so this album was really in the spirit of self-inquiry uh asking questions instead of presenting answers um and that it's a reforging. It's like a reshaping. Um, there was something about the first album that was very necessarily, I, I don't mean this in a bad way, but in a positive way, like very arrogant and, mm. you know, in the sense that it wasn't very, not arrogant as in how it was made, but arrogant in its sound, you know, just very mm. like, where this this album is more there's a, there's a, there's a line in the new album that says uh, my hour of contempt is once again upon me which is this idea that inviting this back into yourself this radical self doubt mm -hmm. this attacking parts of yourself that are not serving you anymore um And the the final line, the final song, "He Will Fight Savagely," um, I think represents this idea best, where it says, 
With your tail in hand, I am led to the end of man and the door of succession. You know, like what's next? Mm. What's beyond what I am now? You know, the the spiritual evolution of what I what I am now, I guess. I think that's so, uh yeah. I, th I think that's a beautiful place to end. Uh, Kyle, may I thank you so much for, for being so open with me and, and uh, for this conversation. Thank you very much.